knew what was going on, but we couldn't really put our finger on it properly. In fact, it's even taken me longer to put together this whole Everything Code thesis around this. But 2020, it became absolutely clear that the debasement of currency was the biggest trend and that there was no way out of this debt crisis and this was only going to accelerate. And then that's when I, I think like you, had realized there was only two trends that matter. One was technology, the other was crypto, and they're both technology. In today's video, RulePal talks about why crypto is the best way to make money, what humanity has ever been given to us, and how we can best use it. Rule tells us how he plans to make it through the next market wave. So let's watch the video right away. It's fascinating because I've gone down a journey where I used to run large diversified macro portfolios. I now basically run 90% Solana because I think everything is so correlated and that you might as well just choose the best performing asset and don't get married to it because it was ETH last cycle. Now, I do a lot of technology investing as well. But if, if I just if, even, you know, I'm a, we'll talk about Tesla and NVIDIA and stuff in a sec and AI. But even if I think they're the greatest companies in all of history, I just divide it by the chart of Solana and they're all down 99%. So in which case, I can't even do it, which is crazy. I mean, it's, it's not a normal world where I say, yeah, my entire di diversification is basically I've got one token and a bunch of other stuff on the side. You know, yeah, I've got some meme stuff and bits and pieces and a whole bunch of NFTs because I've been buying high value, high end art NFTs for long-term value. That's it. And it sounds like you've gone kind of the same way where you're super concentrated in two basic ideas, blockchain, AI. More aggressive position in Tesla with a bunch of calls into the bottom of the recent sell-off. Because- In 140? Tesla, yeah. Yep, me too. And te I, te te Tesla to me <laughs> is, is pretty, yeah. Tesla to me is super interesting because it trades like a cyclical car company in the down cycle because people buy less cars, right? We can see that. They're struggling with car sales and inventories because it sells cars. But the moment the cycle turns, which is where we are now as the business cycle goes, you get the double kicker of earnings multiplier plus the technology, which is why it ends up massively outperforming everything else in the up cycle. But people's psychology they then look at sentiment on Twitter and it's like anti-Elon or it's this or it's that. They've lost their way and they can't sell cars and look at China and mid-curve, mid-curve, mid-curve. It's like, guys, nobody can sell cars when the economy's slow. Either, and Tesla's sitting on $30 billion of cash, they're not going bust. So you might as well invest on a forward basis, use this opportunity. Chairman Gary Gensler of the Securities and Exchange Commission says that the approval of U.S. spot Ethereum exchange-traded funds will depend on how quickly issuers can respond to comments from the SEC. Gensler's comments seem to put the onus for approvals on issuers and show that the SEC will not drag out the process as some had feared. On May 23, the SEC approved 819 bits for filings to list spot Ethereum ETF on various U.S. exchanges, but they can't start trading until they have the required S-1 registration statement approvals. These users want to respond to the comments they get, but it's up to them how much they do, as that person said. Gensler, in a June 6th story from Ruhr's The Comments, shed new light on what Gensler said on CNBC earlier that same day the next steps will take some time. Some people think this means that the commission will take their time signing off on the S-1 forms. According to Ide Palin's, a Bloomberg ETF analyst, the process could take weeks or months, but he thinks it will be over by the first week of July. The SEC has not yet explained why it seemed to change its mind about the spot Ethereum ETF just days before the first deadline, but Gensler hinted to reporters that the change may have been caused by Grayscale's successful legal challenge to the Bitcoin ETF last year. Grayscale argued in court that since the SEC had already approved the Bitcoin futures ETF, there was no reason to deny spot Bitcoin ETF, which was a key factor in their decision to approve it. Gensler told readers that the Ethereum case was similar and that the SEC staff had looked at these Ethereum files and seen the different correlations. These correlations are similar to those in the Bitcoin space, Gensler said. See it? I was in a taxi in an Uber yes, uh, two days ago in Miami. It was a Tesla. I'm like, what do you think of your car? He's like, we spent 
40 minutes just talking about his car. The same in a Uber in Portugal in a Tesla. 40 minutes, the guy was just, I have never paid service. He said, I'm making a 30% higher margin as an Uber driver because I've got a Tesla. And all of these things, but if you talk about it, if you say, well, look at the robots. People are like, well, Elon, it's all nonsense. Self-driving cars, it's never going to happen. Even though the new self-driving is pretty bloody good from what I hear, and there's another iteration coming out in a couple of weeks or so, but everyone discounts all of that. There's something so weird that you, you're not even allowed to talk about Tesla without people, and we're sure we'll have in the comment section of this. Um, yeah. Uh, this anti-Tesla thing, it's weird. Because Japan has been public in their desire for robots for the same issue. China, same. Europe has been slow on the uptake, but Germany is building the NVIDIA plant. Uh, sorry, the TSMC plant there. Japan has a TSMC plant, um, and the US is building three. It, really interesting, I began watching mid-curve takes on Twitter. There was... Um, Elon had said, well, you know, GDP is obviously GDP per capita times capita. And everyone's like, fucking moron. Of course it is. What he's trying to explain is that without capita people, you have no GDP. And with a shrinking global population, GDP growth collapses. So you have to solve that equation. And the only answer is the robots and the AI. Is it? Because the current narrative is the robots are taking our jobs. When the narrative is so strong, I, like you, I start to explore what is the other narrative, because this is an obvious narrative. Of course, it's going to take jobs. You know, I'm building a RAL AI, which is going to be a video AI version of me. That, can that take my job? In some respects, yes. But when I think through this, I think through what is the essence of what humans are? How do we add value to each other? Actually, you add zero economic value for me because you've built, you, you've made my can of LaCroix, that's not your economic value. That is economic value. The economic value you give to me is I watch you on your YouTube channel and I'll learn something from you. Right? Discussion. Humans are social creatures. We like to communicate with each other and be around each other and we like, like experiences. And somebody floored me, David Matten, who I write The Exponentialist with, um, floored me with this comment. He's like, ask any kid what they want to do for a living. And it's not you and I, which was, oh, we want to be a banker or a, you know, an astronaut or a marine biologist, which I wanted. I want to be an influencer. And at first, you and I of the age, we'd roll our eyes and go, really? But there again, you and I are both doing that as part of the, what we do. But David said, you've got to understand they're adaptive. Humans are incredibly adaptive. And if our job in the future is to entertain other humans, then they're making the right life choice right now. If that is the thing. And then when we add Web3 and the ability to tokenize these communities and culture, then it actually creates an economic system in its own right based around humans. Somebody else raised an interesting point to me, so I'm dumping a load of info on you. Uh, somebody else raised a really interesting point. They said, Obviously, OnlyFans will be AI, but you'll pay a premium for human OnlyFans. And that, at a macro level, also becomes interesting. There are ways of that they're doing order flows that don't mean open market buying. So there's, there's ways around it. Like I know most of the people who have built these ETF businesses. They're straight as a fucking die. So, and they're in the mission. Is there manipulation? There is, having been at the epicenter of the financial system, there's always somebody trying to make a price and take a price. There is no grand master plan for manipulation. You know, wait till the options come on these things and then it becomes more complicated. The more participants there are, the more complicated th that world becomes. Um, so I, I think it like you, it's a net positive. I think it's hilarious. Because at one level, I think the SEC and the authorities and the financial system think, well, we're going to control most of these assets and we can use our usual channels so we can maintain our fee structure and our control. How I think of it is it's a Trojan horse because before you know it, you buy Bitcoin, then you're seeing that Solana is going up more. You end up opening a Coinbase account. Before you know it, you're self-custodying your Solana and aping into WIF. 
you know, that's the journey. We've seen them all do it. We've seen them all do it. They'll start with a Bitcoin ETF. And before you know it, they've got a bag full of whiff in their phantom wallet and uh, the world, their worlds will have changed. So I think of it as a Trojan horse. They think they've won control. I think they've actually lost control. Analysts say they know why Bitcoin has failed to surpass its all-time high of $73,679 set in March. As of June 6th, spot Bitcoin ETF around the world held around 1.3 million Bitcoin or 5.2% of BTC circulating supply, with AOBL15 Capital holding a large portion of that. Key Role Investments founder Charles Edwards You know the market is made up of spot, futures, ETFs, and options, so any price is a product of all of them. Crypt in a June 7x post, Trader Christopher Inks wrote that ETF are important, but the price of BTC is more heavily influenced by macroeconomic factors and geopolitical events. After nearly three months, BTC has failed to rally, trading mostly within the $660,000 support level. Edwards said another substantial price spike requires confirmation of one of three primary drivers and a higher average ETF. He said long-term holder selling growth in us or global liquidity is reduced. Edwards noted that long-term holders have been selling more frequently in 2024, and their share of the total Bitcoin supply has dropped slightly to 54% over the past six months. While 3E% doesn't sound like much, that is equivalent to about 630,000 Bitcoin, or about 3X the total amount purchasable. With daily Bitcoin issuance reducing by 50% in March, the delta between ETF consumption and Bitcoin mined will likely grow over the coming year. Subscribe to our channel. Thanks.